Hi everyone, it's Fronagy here from Aussies Do Down Under Homeschool Season and today we're going to be speaking about all things English curriculum or language arts, whichever one you want to call them, so <laughs> stick around. This is for you if you have no idea what to give your children for lingu linguish. Linguish. It sounds like a licorice, doesn't it? It's yummy. Anyway, <laughs> thinking of my belly. Okay, so this is the episode if you have no idea of what to give your kiddos at home for English. What do we give them? How do we teach English? Especially if you're not that good at it like I'm not. Well, I'm here to help and I'm going to show you a couple of them now. Just before I begin, my kids, as I've said before, but just in case this is the first episode you've ever watched of mine, first, hey, how you going? Thank you for watching. Both my children have varying degrees of dyslexia, so my curriculum picks usually are influenced by that, and especially English, especially English. So I have one child who loves writing probably almost too much, doesn't know how to rein in that creative sort of flow that's happening and I have another child that hates writing altogether. <laughs> he would much prefer to give you all of his knowledge in the spoken word. In saying that we still need to teach them how to write, we still need to teach them English rules and all that sort of fun and exciting stuff. So I have um, done a bit of research in relation to a more reluctant writers because my daughter having too much creativity is not necessarily a bad thing so it's just a matter of honing her in which this program that I'm using does as well. For my son who really doesn't like writing at all it's a great opportunity to help guide him through the process so it's not so overwhelming and it's easier for him to take it in bite-sized pieces. Now before I start jabbering on about my curriculum, I would like to thank my new subscribers for subscribing. If you haven't already and you feel like you want to, please subscribe. It really helps with that YouTube algorithm. Now after a lot of research in relation to my reluctant writer, I came across a program called The Write Shop that has a lot of different programs within it and you can pick and choose sort of what you want from there. You can get whole sets or you can get just one booklet it really is a matter of sort of looking to see what you like or dislike and getting only what you really want to. I ended up getting the pack, but I'll discuss that a little bit more as I show you the product. Now, this program really um, involves a lot of parent participation. So if you are the type of parent that sort of wants your child to go it alone and, and do a bit more of their own work, this is not the program for you. Nope. <laughs> You can fast forward to the next review. <laughs> no, please watch. It's always good to watch these things. No, but what I'm saying is that you really are there leading them on the journey. You do a lot of the writing initially in this program. You uh, play the games with them. So it really has a lot of participation. So keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, so we keep our English curriculum program, the Write Shop program, in these little sort of filing folders, you know, the concertina sort of style ones. The reason I do this is because this particular program involves a lot of pre prepping for the different um, topics that you go through throughout the year. I like to be able to keep them sort of neat and exactly where they need to be. So, because there's a lot of sheets um, and I could see it kind of getting out of control a little bit um, <laughs> if I didn't have it in something like this. So, I mean, there's many other ways you can keep the program, but this is how we like to keep it. You can buy this program in either an, like they'll send you an ebook, so you're printing it off, or you can actually get the books delivered, which are quite colorful and pretty. Um, I'm in Australia and this is from America, so I wasn't gonna wait. I'm not the very best at patience, I must admit. <laughs> I don't have the patience to wait, you know, a couple of weeks for me to get the books. If I find a program and I really want to choose, like I really want to try it, I want to try it now. <laughs> so if you are anything like me, then just buy the ebook. 
just factory in the fact that yes it's cheaper it's probably about 30 30 dollars cheaper or something like that but then you have to print it all out so you've got to take that into consideration when the money you know when you're thinking about the money and for me i'm not going to do a whole lot of printing that's colorful because that's going to cost more so i tend to do most things in black and white in saying that if you're doing it in black and white there's pictures they can color them in your children so and that makes it more fun for them anyway so this is how we keep it in our little concertina sort of filing thing. Okay, so there is placement help. So if you're not sure where your child is up to within English or language arts sort of curricula, you can, it's not a test, a placement test, but it sort of guides you through choosing which pack is right for you. Now, if you go on to the Right Shop website, and I will definitely put a link to the Right Shop website down below in the description. Now, the my, both my children are in grade six and I chose Right Shop Junior Book F. Now, I actually chose the value pack, that is Book F value pack. It's the Junior Book F and the value pack comes with four components. It has the teacher's guide, the activity pack with the fold and go and I'll show you a bit more about this in a second. It has the time saver pack and the junior writer's notebook in a digital format. So you, like I said, will have to do a little bit of um, printing. Not a little bit, actually a lot of printing. And put it this way, I keep the teacher's guide just on my computer because to print the whole thing out, I would actually have to print something like 300 and something pages. Okay, so the program is actually cut into 10 lessons. Now, these lessons, and I'll just give you a little example, they go through um, adventure writing, tall tale writing, mystery writing, limericks, persuasive writing, personal narrative, responding to literature, a summarizing sort of lesson plan and a non-fiction report. I think that was 10, don't think I've missed any. Oh, historical fiction as well, I missed that one. Each lesson is then cut into different parts. So they will start initially with a pre-writing activity, then they do something like a skill building sort of session, there's journal prompt writing, there's brainstorming worksheets, there's reading logs, there's self-editing checklists, check lists. <laughs> there's self-editing checklists <laughs> that help the child edit the, their own work. And then on top of that, there's these fold and go booklets, which I'll show you in a second. Other than those things, then they're just right, they can either write or present their piece of writing on computer programs, sort of Word or something like that, or they could do one of those sort of folded books, or they could do those pop-up books. So the presenting of the final sort of copy of whatever they're writing is really up to the child and up to you as the parent to sort of guide them how they want to do that. But all, to, you know, all the program up to that point is pretty much set. You don't have to think at all. It really guides the parent through step by step even giving suggestions to the answers that you're asking your children. So even you can guide the child through those answers. If they're finding it a bit hard, it gives you those suggestions as well. So in that respect, it's really good. You don't have to know anything about English. You just um, need to know how to read. <laughs> so, okay, so I'll show you an example of one of the topics. So at the moment, we are actually doing non-fiction reporting. And, and like I said, you're going to do a lot of pre preps So what I did was just before I started using this program, I sat down, I printed off everything I needed to do for the kids. I then sat down and cut out everything. <laughs> Certain things, there was a couple of things that you can do with the children just to sort of get them involved. But most of it, I just wanted it to be ready to go in these books so that we could just pick it up pull out the section we were doing or the topic we were doing and start. Now, like I said before, there is a fold and go part of the program. Now the fold and go consists of, and this is the way I've done it, some other people might put this together a little bit differently, but I just sort of followed what they said. 
Now again, I didn't want to waste a lot of paper, so I printed sort of two pages on one paper and I just made them small. You can make them full size. And I did start at the beginning making them like big, but I just felt like I was um, sort of wasting too much cardboard, too much paper. Now if you have an endless supply of cardboard, paper and ink, be my guest. <laughs> Please do um, make them big because I suppose at the end of the day they're a little bit easier to read when they're big, nice and big. Um, I just didn't want to waste, and I, I kind of liked the idea of these little sort of cute half size ones because they're easier for the kids, the kids to handle. So the fold and go is more like your English rules for that lesson. They don't have to be specifically for the topic that you're doing, but they tend to stick to a couple of rules per topic so that the child's not overwhelmed with all the rules in one big, you know, sort of lot. This way they only really have to concentrate on a couple of rules for every kind of month. What I didn't mention, I probably should straight off the bat is each one of these lessons is designed to take about three weeks to do. So you are doing sort of one activity every time and it will lead the child basically through the rule to the sort of building their um, skills in writing in that particular style of writing. So say the report writing, they're going to first start looking at what, what a report looks like, how a simple report can be turned into a more detailed report. They're then going to go on to building a few more skills, maybe a game, the draft, the plan, the draft, and then the final copy. So it will lead them through, usually over a three week period. Some of the topics do suggest that you take a little bit longer, like the report writing. They say it could take four even to five weeks to complete all the different tasks. So in saying that, the fold and goes consist of English rules. Now in this particular topic, which is the report writing topic, they're concentrating on um, quotations, commas, where to put different commas in different sentence structure. There's six pages of activities. We usually do the whole fold and go in one lesson. So it's not a quick exercise. It can sometimes draw out a little bit far, but I like to finish the fold and go in one. There has been one time where they were quite detailed and I had to do it in two, but that's okay. I sort of move and flow the way my kids are feeling on that day and I find that works for us. Some of the things they had to do, pick the correct sentence where the comma is, choose the sentence below that has the comma in the correct spot and they'll give the same sentence with commas in different areas, write a sentence using the words and the prompts that they've given them and put the comma in the correct spot. These are great. These resources are excellent. It is designed to be able to use it, you know, over and over again, not just for this particular topic. And because they're easy to sort of hold and keep filed for the kid, they, they, the kids can bring them out whenever they're doing anything of writing. They can have a quick glance over. Now in saying that, they also do these little quick reference. Hopefully you can see that, which has basically got everything they do in this one is quick referenced on this one. If they say writing a piece of writing and they can't remember exactly what the rule was for commas, they can get this out. They don't have to get this out and read everything again. This has just got the rules on it. So they can get this out, look at the rule, and then move on. It's not a having to do it all again, like it may be if you were to read the whole thing again. So that's the fold and go part. Every lesson starts with a fold and go. Every lesson starts with a new English rule. This is designed, like I said, to be used over and over again, just not for that, not just for that topic. Great resource. This is one of my favorite parts of the actual lesson. So really good resource. Now, usually the next thing after the fold and go is either a game or an activity to get them introduced to the actual topic. So in respect to um, the report writing that we're doing at the moment, the very next activity after the fold and go was the Statue of Liberty report. Now this was, um, in a one sort of page and we've cut out the pieces. It consisted of a report that was very good, but simple. And what the children had to do 
was look at these expansion cards and add to the report, add to the topic, uh, sorry, add to the uh, fact that the report was giving them and make the report a little bit more interesting. So they were building on a very good report as it was, they were making it a little bit more interesting and a little bit more detailed just to show the child that a report can be simple um, but show them how to make it a little bit more interesting to pull in the reader and want them to find out what the report is all about. This was a great little exercise. We did it together. I have two children. We all did it as a family. They both had their own sort of cards and they both took turns in deciding which one went where. And it was a matter of sort of putting the puzzle together to make the report flow and be more interesting. Now, when they finished that, they could then turn the answer over read the report in its entirety and make sure that they put the cards in the right spot. So that was a great little game and it showed them a really well written simple report that's only one page long, has a picture, very succinct but interesting about the Statue of Liberty and also was nice to learn about the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> so great little thing. So that was the first exercise that they do. Then go on to a pre-writing exercise, which is story stretcher. And hopefully you might be able to see that. And basically what it involves is the child having subtopics. They've got one topic that they want to do and it can be anything they want. They suggest that you use um, topics that are of interest to your child, something that they already know a lot about. So if your child's really into, I don't know, space, or butterflies or ballet or I don't know whatever they're into <laughs> choose that subject that they've already got a lot of information in their mind maybe it's Lego maybe my son's really into Star Wars TIE Fighters at the moment so that's what we choose they'll put that as the main topic they'll then give you three subtopics for this particular ex exercise you will write in the subtopic so the parent is doing all the writing in this part of the exercise They'll then give you a detail on that subtopic. So my son is into TIE fighters. He'll then give me one particular style of TIE fighter and then he'll tell me one detail about that TIE fighter. He'll then give me a little bit more information, maybe the wingspan of the TIE fighters or what they're made of or the colors or if there's a range of colors or who actually uses those particular TIE fighters. So it's a Star Wars thing for all those who are going, what is a TIE fighter? <laughs> I think it's a spaceship, <laughs> but don't quote me on that one. Um, so then you're just going to build on that one subtopic and what they're really trying to get you to do is start stretching out that information, you know, giving a bit more information about that particular subject and making it more interesting with a few more details. So you're just plumping out the details. Okay, so then the next activity they're going to do is usually some sort of game. There's a lot of um, sort of board games in the Right Shop programs I've noticed and it's really fun because it helps the kids sort of loosen up and have a bit of fun with writing, not just always thinking, oh, I've got to write, especially for my son. Um, so the next one they do is called Choose Your Own Report and it's sort of like, um, a pretend report that they need to create, move through the game board and win. You're going to need to cut out some of the game pieces that they need and they've also got their own display board where they're going to use these game pieces to then start creating their report. And the first person to finish their report is the winner. That's the aim of the game. So the journal prompt for this non-fiction report basically gives them three, and hopefully you can see that, three windows where they're going to write a, they'll pick a subject that they already know, say butterflies. They'll write a few, like three or four facts that they already know. Then they're going to write three or four facts that they want to learn. Then they're going to get onto the internet, into books, learn those particular facts that they've popped down in the middle square. And on the last square, they're going to write down the information that they've just learned from checking out the internet, checking out books or other resources that, the, that you might have for them. Then the prompt is going to be answering the question down the bottom. So this one starts, the most interesting thing I learned about space, so butterflies, is that 
and they'll take one of the things that they learned from doing their research and they'll give a detailed description of what they just learned. That ends that exercise. That exercise is then done and then the next exercise you would do on the next lesson. Now, the next exercise is a brainstorming. So this is starting to get them into the report that they're going to finally do. So the brainstorming is set up in an introduction, a body and a closing. So similar to what they had in the Statue of Liberty report, they're going to help the child run through and hopefully you can see that going to help the child run through an introduction and how to set up their introduction, then the body of their report giving those subtopics. So see how it then relates back to some of the activities they've already done. And that exercise is basically the start of their, their final report. So you want them to pick a subject for this one that they're into, that they're interested in. It may be the same one they chose in the other ones. That doesn't matter. So if there's butterflies and they want to continue with butterflies, they can. It, the thing I find best is to choose topics that the children are really into because it's going to help them want to write about it or want to learn about it and, and then they're going to want to do more work for you. If you're giving them something that they don't really like, it's just going to be harder and harder to sort of pull that, you know, that want to learn out of them. So. This is the start, this is your plan. So once they've finished doing the brainstorming, what they're then going to do is take that brainstorming and then they're going to put that as a draft and they're going to give that to you to then edit or to look at and ask you know, if you want more or less or whatever it is. What they do give you though is a self-editing checklist and this comes with most of the topics. Hopefully you can see that one. This is basically for the children to do themselves. So what I do is when they've done their draft, I give them one of these. They read each thing that they're supposed to be looking out for. So say the first paragraph introduces the main idea. If they can look at their own work and say, yes, it does, they tick that off. They go through the checklist, ticking off each one as they check it, and then they give it to you. So then you can then edit the work, give them some ideas of how they can improve it, if you need to, do a few um, corrections if you need to, and then you give that back to them. They then do a final copy in the way they want to present it. So you can really let your child's imagination go wild, as long as they've got the information there. You know, for something like a report, if it's on a particular subject they love and they want to do pictures as well, let them go for it. You know, you can always type the information and cut out and post it, paste it onto a big poster and then they can draw pictures and make it really interesting and it's something that they can visually look at that they've completed and that they can feel proud of. So that's really open to you and them how they're going to present it. They might even like acting and they're right in front of the camera and presenting it you know to a, a video and showing visual aids behind them in the subject matter that they've just done. So really the sky's the limit when it comes to the final copy. Okay so that ends that topic and then the next week so that's going to take three to four weeks and then the next week after that you'd start the next topic. But some of the things I really love about this program Ooh, would have to be these resources, these little books that you put together the, with the English rules in them. Great resource, they can keep using them. One of the other things I really like about this program is the self-editing sheets because it gives the kids sort of a, a checklist and helps them to really start learning how to edit things themselves. Another thing I like about the program is the price. I mean, this realistically will, will last me over a year with all the topics in there and I think I spent a I think it was like $88 for the whole pack you can buy some of the just the simple books for say $20 maybe $30 I think it was about $88 now that's US so I don't know what the um, equivalent Aussie dollar would be at the time but it's not that much for a whole year or more of curriculum for English so I think it's good value for money. I also like the parent participation now I know some people won't like this and there's other subjects that I prefer not to participate in as much like mathematics just because my kids are so different and mathematics is a little bit different than when I learned it 
and I tend to forget a lot of things so I, I prefer someone else to be sort of guiding them through their math but for English I really like the parent participation because I can really sort of take my time in explaining things and it's really easy to follow like the parent book that comes with it and that's the one that I keep on the computer it really is a step-by-step -step. like I said it gives even suggestions of the answers you're looking for when you ask the child a question or you're prompting them with an idea so I think it's a really um, it's a really user-friendly program that's that's the word I'm looking for very user-friendly very parent-friendly <laughs> Um, even if you are so not confident with your English, it's really easy to follow because English is not my strongest subject, but it's definitely an easy program to run with. And I think the kids like the variety as well, not having to do the same old writing all the time. You know, getting to do poems or getting to do limericks or getting to learn about history at the same time as doing English is always handy because it just keeps it a bit more interesting. So in that respect, I really like it. Things I don't like about it, hmm, sometimes it's hard for, especially my daughter, to hone in that creative sort of inspiration that she gets and she'll just, you know, like word vomit <laughs> all over the page. Sometimes that's hard sort of trying to reel her into just sticking to the subject matter, but I don't think that's to do with the program. I think that's more to do with me trying to help my daughter learn to, um, do what's asked of her rather than what she seems to want to do. She's creative, so I can't really help that much. But I don't have any real complaints about it. Sometimes I feel like if it takes so long to get through the subject, then, you know, I feel like it could be maybe a bit quicker. But at the same time, I really, really like that part about it because that one subject matter is cut into these easy to understand and easy to do segments so it's not so overwhelming for the child so all in all I would give this out of five stars I would give it like a four and a half so yeah it's pretty up there okay so the next English thing we do is a book report and this is an ongoing thing it usually takes us at least one term sometimes more so the one we're doing at the moment is the book Wonder by RJ Palacio, I think that's how I pronounce it, or Palacio. We run through on the audiobook, so I have a membership on YouTube, and we listen to the audiobook on that, so we can all do it together. And then the children answer questions as they go along using this student pack. Now, I got this student pack from their teacher, who gets resources online with the teacher sort of online area. But in saying that, I've noticed when I do Google searches on book reports or student resources in relation to this book, there is a lot out there. You can Google it and find free resources everywhere, book reports, a lot more resources than just a book report. So there's a lot out there. I've noticed that a couple of schools do wonder in year seven. So there is a lot online and you can find it for free. So you don't have to pay for something like a pack like this. And it's pretty much the same. So all it's doing is it's running the child through and as they finish a chapter, they can pause the book. They'll then go through and answer the questions in relation to that chapter. I've noticed a lot of the questions, well not a lot of them, but some of the questions are in relation to relationships and the upside and the downside of relationships, teaching the children to be um, a little bit more accepting of different and understanding that people are from within and not from what you see. So there's some really great lessons in this particular book that I think are really beneficial for this age group as well as even older kids. Um, so it's a, it's a really good book. I love this book and I think it's a, a really good read. And it's very much, it's very much like the movie. What's up guys, I'm Hunter. They know who you are, um, they, they have seen you before. No. Since as you're here, Hunter, can you tell them what you think about Wonder? I'll tell you when we finish it. But you have seen the movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, he did like the movie and I think they're really liking the book as well. And the questions aren't that hard, so they're finding it pretty easy. We're just sort of going through. We're not in any hurry. When the book finishes, we will watch the movie again and just sort of have a comparison. And I may even get them to do a one-page book report 
on it. So this is really set up more like questions and answers in relation to the book, getting them to really look at what the book's talking about in that um, chapter and writing information so that they're paying attention to what's going on. But at the end of it, I presume maybe they need to do maybe a one page, just quick book report on what the book is about, some of the lessons that they've learned from the book, how they feel about that book, and a bit of a conclusion. So kind of like a little mini report on that book. But I'll see how I go. We still haven't finished yet. We're probably halfway through maybe, I'd say. So this will probably go till the end of this term, term three. And then we may do something else in the last term of this year as well, or we'll start a new one. I mean, it doesn't have to finish at the end of the year. That's the beauty of homeschooling, isn't it? Sometimes you can sort of carry it on to the next year because you're really in no big hurry. The things I love about it is that it follows the book along and they're answering questions, they're learning. They're learning about life as well with this particular book. Um, I love being able to listen to the book on YouTube. We can all listen to it together and it makes the the actual lesson become a little bit more exciting, a little bit more fun because we're listening to the book. It's like watching a movie, you know, together without the popcorn. Although sometimes we do have popcorn. But anyway, so that's our book report. Love it. I have nothing bad to say about it. I have noticed you can buy some resources online for $10. You're not going to be spending a lot of money and there are resources out there for free. So that is our book report. Oh, and also, if you don't have um, the ability to listen to the audio book, you can always go to the library, hire out the book and just read it out loud together. So that's an option. Okay, so apart from that, most of the other work that we do with English or language arts is sort of like ad hoc. If my children, like the other day, my kids were sitting outside on the water feeding a swan. So when something like that happens in our school, if they're really into that and they're, they're really sort of interested and they start asking me questions in regard, like my daughter came in and asked me, oh, are all swans black? And instead of just answering them, or especially if I don't know, you can then use that as a reason to research that. And then you could ask them to do a one sort of paragraph um, little report on swans. So they're the sort of things we do sort of an ad hoc basis. So then we also do letter writing. We have a lot of family that live in different states, different countries, and sometimes they will send letters and the children will do pictures and send a letter back. Those sort of exercises, I don't tend to edit a lot. I let that be a little bit more free writing because I want them to feel comfortable in being able to sort of express themselves without fear of being edited. <laughs> so if they're writing a letter to their nanny or their grandma, I'm not gonna put any red marks on that one, nor am I going to tell them, hey, this is wrong or that's wrong. I'll probably say, oh, look, you, you've spelt that word incorrectly, but don't stress. Or they may have missed a letter or missed a comma. It's not a big deal. Just the fact that they're writing and they're enjoying the process is enough for me. Other things that we do, like I said, with the tie fighting at the moment with my son, he's really into it. I know he doesn't like to write, so if he's really into something like that, I'll say, all right, well, can you write me or type um, me a little report on that subject and I'll have a look at it. So he was trying to tell me about characters from a game that he plays <laughs> and he's verbally telling me and there's a lot of information. And I said, hey, do you think that you could write me a little bio on each one of those characters? Just telling me where they come from, what weapon do they use because it's a fighting game that he plays and maybe a little bit about how they came to be because it gives them a bit of a bio on the game and there's different characters and he wrote me down the whole bio for all of them and that was just ad hoc, you know, we didn't have that set but because he was in the mood at the time to talk about something he really enjoyed it was easier for me to then ask him to write it and he was more happy to do it that way than me saying, okay, go outside and look at a flower, come back and tell me what that flower is and give me a report. It's not something he's into at the moment. <laughs> um, so it's gonna be harder for him to do it. Now, if I tell my daughter to do that, she's gonna write me a three page thing on every particular flower and the flower that she designed herself in her head. So <laughs> it's just a way of giving a particular subject matter and allowing them to write about that subject matter. And it gives them a little bit more control over what they're learning and they feel a little bit more in control of their education. So that's the way we like to do it. Okay, so that is what we use for English curriculum or for language arts, depending 
on what you call it again. Like I said, we do a lot of ad hoc kind of English work, but they're the programs that we kind of concentrate on. The main one being the Right Shop program because that's more like your traditional English rules, writing different styles, learning about different styles and how they go together. So that's more traditional and the book report obviously that's a bit more traditional as well. I like to find opportunity to write anywhere and with any subject because my one of my children like I said is not really into it. In saying that I'm really not fussed if he's typing or writing it really depends on how he feels on that day and I'm just as happy for him to learn that typing technique because he's going to be using that probably more in the future than he will his pen and paper but I'm really happy with the choices that we've made and if you have a reluctant writer then this program might be really right for you again I'm not affiliated with anyone I show you or any programs that I show you um, it's really just me coming from my own personal experience trying to help people who may have a similar experience and that just they need a little bit of guidance on what works and what doesn't before they spend that money so that's what I'm telling you for just to help you in your decision making and maybe you will like them maybe you won't maybe they're not really exactly the right programs for you but I'll give you the information and as I've said before you can do with it as you want so that's it guys, if you have liked this video and you want to see more reviews on curriculum, please hit the like button. If there is a particular type of curriculum that you want me to review, if I can, I'm more than happy to do so. Please comment in the comments below if you have a particular English curriculum that you find useful and why you find it useful. You never know who you're going to help with your comments. I'm always welcoming of all of them because I think it's really important to start that conversation. If you haven't subscribed yet and you would like to subscribe, please hit that subscribe button. It really gives me a boost to continue with my videos. And what else? That's it. I will see you next week. See you guys.